chest pain. 45 year old female with chest pain, is that correct? Okay, on the way to the call, I'm going to have my body substance isolation in. And as I'm coming up to the scene, I'm going to check the scene over and make sure there aren't any overt hazards before I enter the scene. Does the scene look good? Scene's safe. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and enter the scene. And I'm going to kind of do an initial um, impression of the patient. And as I come up, I'm going to look around. Is there anybody around? There's nobody around. She's on the front lawn. Okay, so it's a female on the front lawn. Um, no hazards, right? No hazards. Okay. So while I'm sure it's safe, I'm going to go ahead and make contact, and I'm going to go ahead and check for a set uh, level of responsiveness. Hey, ma'am, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What's going on? No response. There's no response. I have people here to help me? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and open the airway. I'm going to check the airway. Is there spontaneous breathing? No breathing. I'm going to check for a pulse. Is there a pulse? No pulse. Okay. No breathing, no pulse. Can somebody start uh, CPR, start bagging? Let's insert an oral airway and a nasal airway. And I want um, high FiO2 of oxygen going into that bag. Let me know if there are any problems with the bagging. And we will go to uh, an advanced airway. And I'll have somebody working on IV. I'm going to go ahead and get the patient on the monitor. I'm going to turn the monitor on. So we're doing CPR, bagging, ABCs are taken care of, there's no pulse. Okay, I'm checking the monitor, verifying that there is in fact no pulse. Okay, um, I have pulseless electrical activity. We're going to continue with the chest compressions. We're going to attempt to rule out the 5Hs and Ts. Uh, someone get a blood sugar real quick. Let me know when the blood sugar comes back. Let me know if the bagging becomes difficult. Once the IV's in, I want to administer uh, 40 units of vasopressin IV push and have epinephrine uh, ready. Continue CPR for two minutes. Okay. Let me know if anybody has any ideas about 5Hs and Ts. At the end of two minutes, I want to go ahead and recheck and see how things are going. In the bagging, you get a little resistance from the bagging. Get a little resistance from the bagging. Okay, reposition the airway. Can we bag? Still resistance. Still resistance. All right, let's transition to a superglottic airway. I want to uh, insert a, a King LT. How big does this patient look? Um, she's about 130 pounds. Okay, insert a, a King LT appropriate weight. I see a change in rhythm. Is there a pulse? No pulse. There is no pulse. This is, ventri this is ventricular fibrillation. I'm going to go ahead and defibrillate this patient, continue CPR while I'm getting ready to defibrillate. I'm going to go to 100 joules. Obviously, I'm going to drop it down to 50 for this. I'm going to go ahead and charge. Still defib. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Shock delivered. Go right back into compressions. Let me know if the king is in and working correctly, please. Okay, at this time, we're going to continue CPR for two minutes. Continue to rule out the 5 H's and T's. Let me know if that king is having any issues and we can transition to something else. I want to uh, now look at giving epinephrine, one milligram IV push, and uh, having uh, amiodarone, 300 milligrams um, IV on the standby after the epinephrine. Okay. Um, we'll give that slow IV push if the patient continues to remain in ventricular fibrillation and there is no pulse. So we're going to do two minutes of CPR and recheck the patient, see how things are looking. No pulse still. Okay, still no pulse. We remain in ventricular fibrillation, is that correct? Yes. All right. Well, obviously, um, I see the monitor here. <laughs> so at this time, we're going to defibrillate again. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do 200 joules. We verify it's V-fib. There's no pulse. Charging. Continue doing compressions. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Shock. Get back into compressions. Make sure you guys are rotating out. Okay, any ideas on 5Hs and Ts? Let me know if the airway uh, remains impatient. Is the amiodarone going? 300 milligrams. And continue with the epinephrine. Um, one milligram every three to five minutes. Okay, we're going to do compressions for another two minutes. All right, I have a change on the monitor. It uh, looks like uh, sinus bradycardia. I want to verify that there is or is not a pulse. Slight pulse. There is a weak pulse. weak pulse. Okay, we are at sinus bradycardia. Can we get vital signs? Um, no vital signs right now. No vital signs. I do have a weak pulse, so I have sinus bradycardia. Have a very weak pulse at this time. I want to consider pacing, or I'm going to go ahead and do transcutaneous pacing. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the monitor over to pacer. Pacer pads obviously are applied because we have the defib pads on. Have somebody, have somebody on the pulse while I'm doing this, checking for both a carotid and a distal pulse, if you would, please. I'm going to set my pacer rate at 70. 
Someone please draw atropine, 0 0.5 milligrams, and administer it while I'm setting up the pacer, if you would, please. Atropine's in. Okay. Um, no response. And then I'm going to start at 30 milliamps on my output, and I'm going to continue increasing, looking for electrical capture. Continue bagging the patient if there are no spontaneous breaths at this time. I'm up at 45, and I'm going to continue at 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. I have electrical capture. Okay. What about pulse? You do have a pulse. You have a pulse. Okay. Let's go ahead and stay, step back. We have a pulse. Is the patient um, showing any signs of alertness? Yes. She is becoming more alert. She's becoming more alert. All right. Is she tolerating the airway in place? Or? Uh, yes. Okay. If that patient becomes alert and starts to um, you know, become anxious or anything, let me know. We'll get some meds on board to make that patient more comfortable. Okay. okay. Um, again, let's go ahead and now that we have return of spontaneous circulation and tidal CO2, consider therapeutic hypothermia protocol. Let's load and go at this time. Um, uh, continuously reassessing the patient, getting full sets of vital signs at least every five minutes. Um, if the vital signs become unstable or they remain unstable, I'm going to go ahead and look at administering a, a vasopressor infusion uh, for the heart rate at uh, uh, beta 1 effects. Okay. What is the calculations for the beta 1 effects? I'm sorry? <laughs> what are the calculations for the, for the beta 1 oh, uh, effects? Well, what do you want? Which, which medication? Uh, the dopamine. What did you say you were going to push? Uh, <laughs> dopamine. We'll go with dopamine. Okay. 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 5 yeah. to 10 mics per kilogram per minute. Okay. Beta 1 effects. Boom! Man, you can do this. <laughs> just, all say, day. Just, just say, just <laughs> boom! <laughs>